Hey kids, you're about to listen to a comedy podcast. That means that none of this is medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast featuring Dr. London Smith. He's a professional doctor and he's a man that knows his soups. Introducing your host, Dr. London Smith. Hello. And welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast, where we discuss fitness and health, and how to incorporate our modern understanding of science and medicine into our daily lives, but without it being so boring. I'm your host, Dr. LennonSmith.com. I'd like to begin by apologizing to our listeners. We've received some feedback about the excessive amount of technical medical terms that I've been using, such as hyperkeratotic and tasting tongue dog. Uh, so I will try to temper my terminology to a simpler one in the future. Here to help with that is our producer, Cameron. Uh, hey, Dr. London, why are you, I mean, you're 35 minutes late. Yeah, is that a, is that a problem now? Because I'm the one who paid for the clock. Yeah, I, that's, you know, I, I don't have a problem with telling time. I don't, have, I don't have an issue with the time it is. I have an issue with you being 30 minutes late. I know you've been getting really into, you, you call it homebrewing your own soups? Yeah. Is that, I mean, is that, is that, did you get a little lost in that, Dr. London, be honest? Yeah. Or was, were, were you working on a soup that was just taking an especially well, long time? Okay, what I can say for my clocks in my brew studio, uh, they did fog up quite a bit while I was brewing, oh. and, you know, with, yeah. with the, the strength of the force and the fog of the brew. So, yeah, it, it did take a while, but uh, yeah, I've been, I've been cooking up some soups. Pretty, um, it's been scary. It's been mostly scary. Sure. Soups are hot. Uh, See, I didn't know that going into it. It's so hot. And uh, basically, like, I just got whatever I found outside, leaves, twigs, um, which I think are herbs if you crush them enough. Yeah. Do you have some? Can we try it? Uh, yeah, it's in the, um, that sports bottle. You just pop the top. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't recommend inhaling... Oh, not directly. No, you don't want to... You want... You have to dilute it. It's a lot d- dustier of a consistency than I usually expect from a soup. Thank you. Uh, that's actually really high praise. Um, I, I need to get back to the, the team and let them know. I got, I got like 40 workers in there working with me on it. Uh, it's, oh wow! You're just jumping right into this. You're starting an industry, basically. I thought I, when I started, I thought I was, but they really did. Just take my word for it that I knew what I was doing, and it's it's, it hasn't gone, as well as I'd prefer. Um, sales have been, uh, d- kind of dusty. Yeah, that'd be a, actually a great way to put it. Well, so I guess check out uh Doctor London's new soups, homebrew soups coming to a. A soup place to, to near no, you. No, so, 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 sorry, not a soup place. We oh. do not. Uh, we would not. No, we can't compete with that. Uh, it's in the sports bottle, so this is for whenever you go to work out. Oh, right. It's a protein soup. Yeah. Theoretically, someday. Sure. Uh, it's more that whenever you go to work out, you're you're gonna want something, and eventually we hope that that the two worlds will will meet, but but we haven't cracked it yet. We're, we're we're hoping we'll stumble into the right market, basically. Well, and also just the amount of dirt and rocks you're going to be swallowing are going to weigh you down, which are going to add additional weight to your squats. So it's going to be really good for your workout. Okay, yeah, we can try this in marketing. I, it's, it's been a lot of, just a lot of label making has really been what the business has turned into primarily. Just that you already have marketing people before you figured out the soup part is. Yeah, well, you want to get ahead because if you don't market it, then you're just making product that no one uses or likes. And I have a lot of experience in that already. So, yeah. Hey guys, it's Cal here. Welcome to Cal's Corner, the podcast where we chew on a corner of the latest news. You might have heard about my homeboy Splinter from... Okay, hey Cal, Cal, what are you, do- what are you doing in the studio using the equipment? Yeah, this is our studio time. We signed up for this. Yeah. And also, I don't think you have permission in general to use the equipment, but we can, we can move past that. Thanks. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I've slept through my time, so I'm going to go ahead and take, take over here. 
again, I don't think you have a time, but even if you did, what, you're, you have a podcast, you're recording your own podcast? Yeah, yeah, what do you, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's insanely popular, like, I, I talk about cancel culture and stuff, I was just about to oh, say, gosh. you know, Splinter from Ninja Turtles, he said some things, and uh, you, you can't say anything these days, am I right? Yeah, you definitely shouldn't say a lot of things, I agree with that, but okay, you can record your, your podcast, but we need to record an ad real quick for our sponsor. Uh, I don't know if I can. Let's just share the mics. We can do both, okay? Like on, like let's just, yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, we'll just maybe, maybe just yeah, cut cut that first part out. Uh, okay. First impression. Sorry, we have we have an ad. This is uh, I'm Dr. London Smith. This is Cameron, and that was Cal, the out of work lab rat who couldn't get a job with Caldera Lab because they don't test on animals. Uh, and then he became very famous, and now he has a cancel culture podcast. So. First impressions matter. Whenever you go outside and you see people, they see your skin. And Caldera Lab is a men's skincare company that uh, they, they're working to make that first impression better. So they re- help you um, reduce wrinkles, fine lines, and signs of aging. Using our code JOCKDOC at calderalab.com, you can enjoy 20% off their best products. And Dr. London, I've been using this product and it's been really uh, huge results large physically large results yeah I, I can't help but think that it's it's the way you use it oh yeah the way i use it is definitely my own spin on it but yeah well because like for for instance i'll talk about this but the base layer it, it says to get a dime size amount on your hand but you scoop the full amount of the lotion stuff and just put it on your forehead oh yeah I mean, for me, that's... No, 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 no. That's, and that's not the way you use it. Also, like, there are other... You, you guys still with Caldera? You guys still, uh, still doing that? Yeah, they're a great company. We've had a great relationship with them so far. Yeah, they've been, they've been great. Uh, what, why? Do you have a preferred... No, no, it's just I got this sort of rat-based stuff I've been working on. It's, it's not made of rat. I have, to, I have to say that every time. Right, it's like just rat-focused, I guess. No, it's made a little bit of, I like, it's, it's just the blood though. Okay, we can move. Uh, so Caldera Lab has um, men's skincare uh, with the regimen. So it's a bundle that they use to, uh, to help your skin get better. So uh, the, it's made of the clean slate, the base layer, and the good. The clean slate starts and ends your day, and this face wash will leave all skin types refreshed. The base layer, it's a daily moisturizer that hydrates your skin, absorbs fast, leaving you with a matte finish so you can start your day confidently. And then the good is your go-to at night uh, before bed, and it's clinically proven multifunctional serum that helps your skin look tighter and smoother, um, and it helps reduce the visibility of wrinkles and fine lines. And just to clarify again, Cal has nothing to do with Caldera. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's So literally... he's him talking about rat blood and all that, absolutely not a single thing to do with Caldera. He basically, I think, named himself Cal out of revenge because they wouldn't let him like just hang out in their offices, which is what he wanted to do. Yeah, and instead he hangs out in our offices and clearly in our studio. Yeah, which one's like not not okay. It's not okay. Ah, eh, yeah. They always want to cancel me. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> okay. So um, they also have the serum called the Icon. Caldera Lab does. Uh, it addresses the three most common skin concerns around the eye, which is fine lines, dark wrinkles, and puffiness. Um, and Caldera Lab. Uh, their products are all made with top tier ingredients. It's a great addition to your daily routine. They don't test on animals. And it's clearly for, for at least like multiple reasons now. We see why you wouldn't want to do that when you're, this is the kind of animal you're dealing with. Working with animals in general, way too complicated. Would be better to avoid it, even if it's sharing a podcast studio with someone who doesn't stick with the assigned times that you sign up for and again i don't know why you are allowed to use the equipment yeah i okay so get 20 percent off with our code jock doc at calderalab.com that's 20 percent off at calderalab.com by using code jock doc jump into skin and first impression royalty with caldera lab yeah. anyway that was our producer cameron uh, also with us is Did you know in the house? You, you can't say anything these days, am I right?
Now for today's medical topic, essential tremor. Essential tremor is a type of tremor that occurs at rest and continuously. The tremor is greatest in the hands, but it can affect the head as well. It may affect some manual skills, such as handwriting or the use of a computer keyboard. Uh, and caffeine actually makes the tremor worse in essential tremor. The best initial treatment for essential tremor is with propranolol. Uh, that's a beta blocker. And if the tremor persists, then you'll add uh, primidone, which is an anti-epileptic medication. And if the tremor still persists, you'll switch treatment to topiramate or gabapentin. And we do want to say, just real quick, I, I people are probably expecting, oh, they're going to make a joke about the movie Tremors, like in the giant sandworms or whatever with all the teeth that eat people. No, you're not going to turn into that monster if you have a tremor. You're going to turn into the District 9 prawn. But you're not... the. Tremors, that's a movie. It's movie magic. It's right. not real. It's not a documentary. Like District 9 was, yeah. yeah. Um, and we... Did they make the sequel to that documentary? No, they, they're still working on it. But I'm just saying, guys, like, do not w- sit there worrying like, oh, am I going to turn into one of the big sandworms from Tremors if you have, you know, sort of a medical condition? No. You're going to turn into the District 9 prawn thing. But if the tremor remains severe despite these interventions and interferes with functioning, consider treatment with a thalamotomy, which ablates the thalamus with magnetic resonance-focused ultrasound or unilateral thalamotomy by delivering local heat, which is very effective at reducing... Which is ironic, because the, in the movie, a lot, I, I think part of it's in the desert. I've never, I've never seen this movie, but no, Tremors is the one with Reba McIntyre. All right, Cameron, you said that we have a special guest today. Is that right? That's right, Dr. London. Uh, oh, hey. I, do I know you? Doctor, yeah, it's me, Dino, from the Soup Group. Okay. Oh, what? Are, yeah. So y'all know each other. You work for, do you work for Dr. London? No, no, no. We, we, we're, we're both home brewers. Yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, okay. It's... Part of a community, soup. huh? Yes, that's right. We're part of a community. And he told me that you guys had a little TV show or whatever this is. And I said, I always wanted to be on radio and TV. You know, it is TV. It is. It plays at gas stations when you are pumping gas. Oh, okay. Oh, the little pumping in. No, it's not that. It's not that screen. It's not the one you're thinking of. Oh. No, it's the it's the little one where you swipe your credit card and then you maybe have to type in your zip code or something like that. Oh, I always pay cash and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, you won't see it then. It says, like, do you want to get a car wash with this? And then it says, would you like to watch a podcast as well? You know, actually, well, Doc, if I may, I have a recipe for a car washing soap. Okay. It's just, just one, okay. Oh. This could be a rights issue is for the copyright on this. That's what I'm worried about here oh no no no! hey all of my recipes are public domain oh wow it's open source soup that's right open soup cc zero which is of course <laughs> chili chili zero if these soups that are in these water bottles are truly yours it sounds like you Forge made these bottles. you need help because i don't know if you're aware of this what, what, what was your name sir my name is Dino. Last name with Andre. Dr. London needs some help. His soups, I don't know if you heard earlier, they mostly it's like rocks and dust they're and dirt. Good. and They're not good, but the, you know, the, the, the doctor's new to the group. Well, I, I, I... It takes a while to learn the art of the soup. Okay. So definitely saying he had 40 employees in like a marketing department. All, okay, okay. I, I'm getting the... Doctor, is this true? I'm getting a much clearer picture of what's actually going on now. Have you been commercializing your soups only six months in? Well, it's, I mean, it's been three years and six, but six months is when I went public. Yeah. Uh, six months ago. But like, so, so the label making is really. Public in what way? What are you, what, what, what are you trading on? Well, just, it's uh, the NASDAQ. Oh, wow. Well, uh, Steve, that's Steve, Steve NASDAQ has a soup kitchen in downtown. Yeah. That's right. And when I say trading on it, yeah, there's there's a lot of haggling. That's that's what, when you when you contribute soups to feed the homeless and needy, which is why you should only send edible soups to the Nasdaq. Okay. God, this again. Well, if Cameron's saying you're still serving the dirt ones, I thought we solved that problem two months ago when you brought dirt and everyone got sick. Except that one lady who has pika. She loved it. 
and like yes and by the way for those who don't know pika is whatever you do crave a soup kind of like what m- meets my description or it doesn't even have to be a soup earthy things yeah a dusty soup yeah. dirt steel nails crumbs great great and i i can tell the medical terminology has been rubbing off whenever i go to the groups that's kind of what i have to lean on sure because the soups he always has a fresh disease and they're always in alphabetical order but we never get why he's staring at us as if we're supposed to react to when he says them it's strange Dr. London needs help with his soups because you you told me, you said you've already got a sponsorship deal with the one and only Joey Chestnut, the guy who eats all the hot dogs. Joey Chestnut sponsored your soup? He's going to do a soup eating contest. You're going to, going to kill him if it's just rocks and stuff. And if you, you're going to kill a beloved hero. But the publicity, if that happens, I, look. There is such thing as bad publicity. And the one thing you cannot do is kill Joey Chestnut. That and dog fighting are really the only two things you truly can't do. Because I really did work hard on the getting my team to, to work hard on the soup. And like to, to be forcing it on me and like all these rules about it having to be edible and everything. Like since when was that a part of what soup is? It's always been part because it, otherwise it's not soup. It's just a mixture. Dr. London does see his soup not as a science, but as an art form. And, of course, breaking the rules is part of working within the rules in art. And that but, for, of... for example, painting should involve paint. That's a basic rule of paint. Otherwise, it's, otherwise, you're not painting. So if you can't eat the soup, it's not soup. It's not even broth. I don't know. Could I paint with soup? Let me think. There's the Andy Warhol soup thing. Does but that then, but you're still doing the act of painting. You know what I mean? So, like... If you use a pencil on paper, that's not. I'd have to see how Andy did it. He he was a genius, you know. So we, I'm not really sure. Whose side are you on, Mister Cameron? No, it's just I. I'm on. I'm on. I'm gonna have my robots fucking kill you. I'm on the side of truth. That's what you want, right? You've got robots. Yeah. Like soup making robots or other kind of robots. That's yes. I have a soup making, but it follows my directions. It can't make its own recipes. I've made sure to limit it. You know what I mean? He brings it to the soup club, and he says like. Hey, my robot lives by the three robot rules that makes it not hurt anyone. But I which are thought- only make soup. Soup must be eaten. Never make your own. Those are the three rules of robotics for my soup robot. Oh, wow, could you imagine the terror that would happen if a robot was able to make its own soup with its own recipe? I shudder Ooh. to think. It'd probably be bolts and stuff. Also, it's only programmed with one phrase that says, Happy birthday, Polly. The robot has physically assaulted people, which is why... They thought they were soup. I'm working on that. Okay. It just... Like, I get, I get that for me, you know, there, I, I recognize... Don't quite understand, but I recognize the criticism. Okay. Which part are you not understanding of your, we can't eat your soup? Doctor! He, I, London, I think, is convinced it's just going to be a branding thing. He clearly, like, fixated on the Pika thing for a quick second because he was like, oh, wait, that might be a demographic who would really be into this. Okay, okay, look, if you do want brand, look, I, I'm, I, my bra- I, I have to give brand advice when I see it. It's a sickness. But if you call it, mmm, Pika Rica, it's tasty Pika, you market it as a treatment for people with Pika, but you have to make it nutritious and stuff, that, and you gotta have a path for weaning them off of. You can't just feed them dirt and metal. They'll die. Yeah, because this sounds like it's encouraging it. Right! You don't want to be pro-Pika. Dino, I think we need to... I think maybe we should start with, like, basic ingredients. Like, instead of loose dirt, what, what, would, what would your version of loose dirt be? Uh, seasoning. Or rice, perhaps. True, I don't know. How do you get that? store Ooh, okay um pretty much any store even a 7-eleven has some kind of rice product in it. it if you dunk if you dump uncle ben's in a pot of hot water that's better soup than dirt. so so here's the problem you do you have rice krispies on hand Dr. uh i mean in the snackatorium so i mean we do have wait wait you have a snackatorium it's miles away to call it. It's it. It's he hasn't been there in years. Well, it's you. Know, well, it's. I, I guess the name sounded fancy enough that I thought like I would have to build it near an observatory, snackatorium observatory. I don't know. It's it sounded somewhat similar in my head. So I found 
You built your snagatorium on the sacred mountain of Mauna Kea? Uh, honestly, the, the real estate guy, like, didn't get into it with me on that. I just said... Doctor, this is... You have one PR crisis after another coming for you. Okay, and th that does bring up the other point. So, you keep saying, like, I have to go buy this stuff. My PR team yeah. is so expensive. <laughs> I think you gotta fire the PR team and just make soup you can. Ah. Then you won't need it. No, at this point, I, I'm kind of dug pretty deep in. I I don't think I can. I don't. Th I think the best soup in the world would not save me. You've done something so bad, soup cannot fix it. What could that be? Well, just the way the PR team has pushed the soup thus far, uh, and, and it involves certain groups that have these rallies and things, which I do, I'm not even for. Wait, what certain groups? It's, I believe, I don't know why you've even been attending these rallies, Dr. London, but it's for people who are very neutral on circumcision. They just don't really care either way. <clears throat> Lots of cotton candy. That's, that's actually the reason I go. Oh, they usually have a cotton candy. There's a cotton candy guy. Okay. Yeah, well, it's super close to my place. Like, talk about the opposite from the Snackatorium. It's like right down the street. Oh, it's it, oh, it, it's 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 that it's that little tiny group of folks who are like, hey, hey, ho, ho, whatever you do with a baby penis is fine. Hey, yeah, hey, that's yeah, right, that's right. And that's even yeah. if they get the energy to chant at all. A lot of, it's a lot of times they're on yeah, their phones should. and right. It's a weird group to line yourself up with, but I don't understand how it's such a PR nightmare that you can't uh, make good soup. Well, it's just the I guess the amount of um we've managed to upset both sides of that equation. Both the people who just think do it. Sure, whatever. but I'm sure both sides of them would prefer edible soup. I guess soup hasn't really come up in those particular discussions. <laughs> this goes back to Dr. London thinking it's a marketing issue solely. Camera, you know, I, I gotta really, I, I, I hate to take sides against a fellow member of the soup group, but Cameron is really the voice of reason here. Well, wow. Have have we considered shoplifting? If buying the ingredients sure. is an Steal issue, the rice. You, I mean, what do you need? Rice you and do. water that just to get started. I'm sorry if I'm an ethical person. Well, you don't have to be sorry for that, but you aren't. You're serving dirt to homeless people at the soup kitchen. Yeah, stop donating it. Like <laughs> nothing ethical about that, doctor. You've really dug yourself a moral hole, if anything, in this one. No, I did find a way to sell it. Oh, uh, to, to, to that doctor. to sell it well, to, to sell it to who, Doctor London? <laughs> to, to, people will buy supplies for the for these kitchens. It's and like I get that it can, it all looks bad on the surface, but that's why we have a PR team. And if you dig, it looks worse, just like your soup. Maybe if I just hire some more PR people, I guess I can cut back a little bit on the ingredients. Your your budget is w which is way <laughs> off, Doctor London. <laughs> duck, duck, duck. Level with me here. How deep into you are are you to this PR firm? How many buckaroos? Like, like how much do they have? How on much me? buckaroos? Oh, oh, that's. Um, I mean, my house, my wife, my children. Um, they technically. And contract-wise, like, I should have probably gotten a lawyer involved, but I was just trying to save a little bit of money on that. Um, so they do own, <clears throat> I guess, my personage. Whenever I said commune earlier, it's been Cameron, are sort you of sucked a into full this? All out deal. As, yeah, I'm, as part I'm, of the podcast, are you trapped in this little TV show with him? Well, uh, sort of. I'm just looking up his... Uh, his info on Nasdaq, the sure. that yeah, soup Steve place. Nasdaq soup kitchen, yeah. They're saying that your company, Doctor London, is already worth seventy four billion dollars. That sounds right. Okay, I guess this kind of makes sense, right? No, wait. Focus this entirely <laughs> on. on. Are these dollars or are these Nas ducats? You got you got to make sure because the symbol's the same. Oh, the, the exchange rate is hard to. Well, the symbol it looks like a dollar sign but it's kind of like a dollar sign is flipping me off i'm not even really sure those are nice ducats. okay i don't know what those are worth then but 74 billion of right. those yeah those are uh kind of a script that you can only spend there at the soup kitchen for soup. and i can oh, buy so much of it yeah it sounds like a lot at least even yeah. if it's one billion dollars per soup that's still 74 yeah. well that's not per like it's uh, but 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 the problem is don't don't you see it's a closed system. You can only buy more of his dirt water. 
and then give more of it to the kitchen. It's not, there's no more, there's no outside well, funding. Yeah, I can buy a lot of my own soup, which, like, it's really good. I was honestly coming around to your side a little bit, London, when I initially thought it was $74 billion because this has been the success story for most of tech for the last decade, right? Is PR, and then you, f- you get rid of the people, you know, making the soup edible or whatever, and you have middle managers. You have 35 middle managers, and they all just sort of hang around, and they, like, shake each other's hands, and they talk about, like, w- that project over there and that project over there. And I, I guess I have to get off my high horse because I did used to own a tech company. Yeah. With an app where uh, the, the the feature was you could turn any dinner into my dinner with entree. Okay, yeah. No, I've we, we're all actually big fans of that app. Well, yeah. You, well, oh, well, thank you. And I'm sorry. Le- legally, I must thank you and apologize. But so you would pay $1,000 a month and whenever you were at dinner, you'd open the app, and it would start you just at a part of the transcript of my dinner with Andre. Mm-hmm. That's right. And then we, would yeah, read it off. And... We could read it off. You could read it to but, yourself. And then the valuation skyrocketed because I own my soup company, and I had the soup company purchase the app company for an inflated price. And then investors saw that price of the valuation. They lumped in more investment in series. A, B, and Minestrone uh, funding round. And then that just kept inflating, but people weren't really using the app except the investors I had used it. So it was all kind of a shell game. But uh, but that, as far as I know, there were some pretty deep conversations had. Yeah. Over oh, when I, it's a lot easier if you just have, if you just read it instead yeah. of having to come up with your own stuff, deep conversation wise. Well, and, and then. Sure. Well, that, that you know, gets, you don't have to apologize for thing. everything. Yeah. Feature creep happens with every app. So yes, you got messaging. It got the stories. Everyone was posting. Like you could record the camera back at you doing yeah, the lines them and all this kind of stuff. From my and the, the photo editing software. But then yeah, the social media site was maybe a that, that was maybe a you you can't. It's hard to control who's on what site. You know, and also support important things like not free speech, but just certain free speech that. I call free speech. No, I, I and you're right. You know, and I, I just didn't predict that uh, actual fascist would take the part of the movie where he talks about how bad fascism is, and they were just saying it with like rolling their eyes. So they made it fascist. Yeah, I, I shouldn't guess that would happen. Yeah, but uh, it's on me. So now I make soup full time. For me, it was the um when I paid up for the dating app aspect of it. And uh, right, yeah, that's... my sex with Andre, yeah, that was a yeah, yeah. Well, oh, that's how I met my wife. So, who, well, who's technically owned oh. by the company now? But congratulations. Yeah. Well, but the, I mean, thank you. I th- thank you rela- enormously. Honestly. Y'all's relationship is just reading my dinner with Andre lines back and forth. I, there's no substance there. That's what, what your what wedding you vows were. It was Are the longest not... wedding ever. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, part of the film did you do for the vows? Can I ask? Uh, honestly, I don't remember. I I was just it was a teleprompter situation. I was just going off of what it said. Yeah, it's none of this is registering. You, you even bought our our special prompter that only would loop the script of my. Yeah, we had a few of them because everyone at the wedding was reading it. Doctor, I guess I owe you more than I thought. You can't uh, rewind or fast forward that teleprompter either, so you just sort of got to wait. No, it just yeah, slowly just gotta, loops. If, if, if you miss it, you're like, all right, we got to wait. Hold on. You got to wait. wait you got to wait two yeah. hours yeah. for it to come back yeah, around. It was a, yeah. a four-day destination wedding for that reason. It, it was meant to be a one-day thing. Can I ask, did you go to the restaurant? Uh, what restaurant? Was that in the script? The, from Ooh, the movie. I, did they... Where, where See, having okay. dinner with Dr. Andre. London kept saying they're not at a restaurant. That's just Wallace Shawn's kitchen. And uh, so, so, okay, so you didn't see the film. You had only read the film? script. He's more. Of, he's more of a fan of the app and the yeah. <laughs> well, again, I must contractually say thank you. And I, I once again, like this, I met the love of my life. We have this incredibly rich relationship, very specific to this uh, app exclusively yeah and she's been very I, I guess i i was about to say very supportive of my ventures with soup but really not a lot of commentary from her in that regard we've been 
uh, just on the app, which I'm glad you kept it running. Like, I get that there are yeah. issues going. Yeah, I mean, it, look, the, the the soup company owns the servers, and again, it's where I do most of my soup research and production. I was back at my soup, my soup kitchen, which is a private kitchen, and I ship it off to the Nasdaq when it's ready. I, Dr. Lynn, I do. I, 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 I sorry, but I, I feel like this is the only opportunity I'll ever have to ask this question. When you say that you and your wife got into a fight, what does that mean? This is something I've been wondering for years because I know it's all my dinner with Andre based. So what is the, what what is the argument? So this is where I feel like we take a few liberties with the app, and I like I hope I'm not going to get in trouble for this. Oh. That's not against the TOS. No, no. I, again, the company's been liquidated by the state. Um, I eventually learned because we're just so into the app that you could just pick whichever words you want while you're reading it, and um, start like start to piece together your own sentences. And I learned that you can actually express your own thoughts and ideas via the the app's presentation of words. It's like a remix. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's like girl so you talk. would you would say things like Poland, young women, magical Wally. Yeah, and I, I, I'll admit now, I don't know if she under. And I think this is a common in marriage. I don't know if we were communicating that well. Oh, like yeah, I don't that's think that's always what it comes down to. I don't think I necessarily conveyed exactly what I meant. Uh, and I don't know that she. I certainly didn't get what she was talking about for most of it, uh, except whenever she just quoted directly from the the app. Which I now I feel I, I found out is a movie as well. Um, so yeah, I don't know which was first, but yes, it, it yeah. is a movie for sure. Yeah, definitely a, a film first. I can clear that. Well, actually, it was a stage play, and then a, it was a script, and then a film, and then an app. But you know, I, I, I've I, I have come to think of marriage a lot like good soup. But the thing is, if you got two cooks making a soup, if they don't both get on board with the same recipe, nothing's going to taste good. If you got one person putting in a bone broth, the other person is putting in dirt, it's not going to come out well. You have to communicate and and want to make a soup together. All right. Uh, well, with that done, um, Dino, is there anyone you want to uh, promote? Anyone you're a fan of? Anything? Uh, you like to give sure. a shout out to them? you know, I don't do the app no more because of the big, again, the big lawsuits uh, of every kind. But when I was looking at technology, I found this little thing called Twitch and their show on it called Wiz World Live, Earth's most magical talk show. They're live every Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific. They also got a podcast. They got a website. There's other shows on the network. There's all kinds of stuff. And for any folks who are, who are, who are going to be in Los Angeles, I'm going to bring some of my soup. So the Idlewild Renaissance Fair, uh, the, the September 22nd through 24th in Idlewild, California, to watch these wizards do their thing in person with a big, big, big bowl of soup. Edible soup, mind you. Thank you so much to uh, Dino, Dino with Andre, or did, uh, sorry, how, how did I pronounce that? Dino with Andre. Okay. okay. Sorry. I, all right. Thank you to our producer, Cameron. Uh, thank you to Jojo in the house. At this point, I, I'm kind of dug pretty deep in. At this point, I, I'm kind of dug pretty deep in. At this point, I, I'm kind of dug pretty deep in. I think the best PR team would not save me. My PR team is so expensive. You've done something so big. My PR team is so expensive. You've done something so big. What could that be? My PR team would not save me. I think the best PR team would not save me. I think the best PR team would not save me. You've done something so big. What could that be? At this point, I, I'm kind of dug pretty deep in. At this point, I, I'm kind of dug pretty deep in.